Good morning, sunshine. Be ready to learn some Japanese. Well then, come on in to translator and time traveler Valen Hark's class. I'm back. Uh, I'm ready to teach again. I'm ready to upload that Japanese right into your brain. And uh, we're, we're continuing on with uh, straight up vocab, straight up right away, as we always do. Take me there. And I will take you there. Well, last time we went over Daisuke. Uh, how to tell people that you just love something, or perhaps that you just love them. Not as seriously as you would love them with the I. I did it, right? We learned that too. And we also learned Bioing, right? Do not confuse Bioing with Bioing, because Bioing would be beauty salon and uh if you're uh suffering from a mortal wound you don't want to go to the beauty salon you want to go to the hospital okay so that's what that was it was bioing and don't you forget it because today we're gonna start off with the next part in your vocabulary list uh if you're following me to know i do recommend you do there is Bioing, and next is Denki. Electricity. Lights. Uh, and on that note, uh, you might be thinking to yourself, well, in English, those are two very different things. But here's the thing, in Japanese, Denki, in most cases, is used to mean electricity. Yes. But... And you don't know how to say this yet, and I'm not going to teach you how to say it yet, to clear any confusion. But if we had an ex for example, this is the English sentence, could you turn the lights on? In that sentence, you would most likely use denki for the word light, when you're asking somebody to turn the lights on, like the light switch, okay? It does not mean, so this here saying light does not mean the actual physical embodiment of light traveling from the sun straight directly into your eyeballs. That is not what this means. It only just means like lights as in the light switch. Okay? There is another word for actual physical light. Uh, actually, there's several words. One of which is uh, hikari. But we're not learning that yet. We're gonna learn denki. Alright? And it's a fun one. You know why? Well, let's take a look. Denki. All right. And again, D-E-N-K-I. And if you press space, it's going to be there. I promise. And if it's not, it's somewhere else on the list. You press space again, you use the arrow keys or keep pressing uh, space, and you will find it. Ooh, I promise. Hit enter. There it is. Electricity or electric light. And let's click on the kanji start learning oh it's got a lot of strokes but they're all just lines and you know i like the ones that are just lines uh, that's why i think they're fun because they're just well they're just easy all right look at that you start off giving it a nice little hat you fill it in and then you do the box thing you give it a shelf and then you do something unheard of with the box you take a tail and you slice right through the box. Okay, let's let's try our try our luck here with the old den portion of Dinky. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And that's a that's a massive tail. You probably don't want to do it that long. Here, do it like do it more like that, right? There you go. Dinky. Well, ding. We don't have the key yet. And the key portion of Dinky is also fairly straightforward. Let's check it out. Give yourself a bunch of horizontal lines, and you've done half of it already. Just like that. All following. Top left to bottom right order, pretty much, right? 
Let's check it out. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And you've got yourself Dinky. And uh, that's, that's pretty much it. Now you can do it. You can say electricity. You can write electricity. I suggest that you throw this, these, these two kanji, as a word into your rotation. Okay? And uh, just as a little refresher, for those of you who are properly following this class, you are maintaining a rotation in your notebook. And that means that you are writing these out uh, a lot of times. But you're not writing them out necessarily all uh, one at a time. Like, you're not gonna... We're not gonna sit down in a notebook and write Denki 100 times. If you do that, uh, you will definitely memorize it. But you'll also hate your life doing it. So, as a little refresher, we always throw in uh, old stuff. So, for example, let's let's get rid of this. Boom. Boom. You you would start out probably today's review probably further back than this because you're still probably memorizing other stuff, right? So you'd probably you might even start all the way back at Gakse. You might be starting all the way back at Hito. That's fine too. The point is you're gonna put them one at a time. Hito, namai, right? Anata. Kata, Mina, Chang, Kung, and then you might write this one again, and you would say and think in your head Jing instead of Hito, just to plug it on home in your head that it, it doesn't only get pronounced as Hito for person, but also is Jing for national of, right? And then you would write Sensei, Gakse, Kyoshi, Kai, Shain, Ginkoin. Isha, Kenkyusha, Engineer, Gako, and Daigaku. And then you do I, Daisuki, Byoing, and then you would write Denki. And you see, if you're starting off today's review, uh, after just having learned this, you're giving yourself plenty of time to forget what you just learned. And uh, it sounds counterintuitive, but that's actually a good thing because. The process of writing all that other stuff and then coming back to this one without looking at it and trying to remember how you did it is forming the little connections in your brain. They're all beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, beep, beep. They're all connecting because you are actively trying to remember. And that's not as effective if you're just writing this out a hundred times in a row by itself. All right. So you get more done with this and that's why we do it. And it's, it's less, uh, uh, I don't know. It makes you hate life less. That's that's what I'm trying to say. So that's a little review on the rotation. Remember to keep on doing that. And uh, today we're going to throw in Dinky. But that's not all. We've also got two easy vocab words that I want to round out the vocab for today with. And they are... Dare and Donata. So first things first, Dare. All right, easy easy come on guys you're you know it and you love it that is who okay and it's just hiragana so you might even be tempted to not throw this into your rotation and i say to you a uh, tempted person uh do throw it in your rotation okay and just consider it a freebie just consider it easy because it's just hiragana it's not a new kanji you should already know these easily because you've reviewed them a hundred times probably and when you're writing them write them as a word like this and and say and think dare who okay and we're also going to go over real quick donata okay another easy one with just the hiragana there, right? Who? Formal, polite. Okay, so we had dare and donata. Who? And who? Polite. And again, why did I write, you know, formal slash polite? Because there's people who think whenever I say there's two words and one of them is polite, they, they automatically assume that the other word must not be polite and it must be rude and we must stay far away from it. That is not how it works. <laughs> if it is rude, I probably wouldn't be teaching it to you, but well, I guess I would because I want you to know every word, but I would tell you that it's rude, right? Uh, this is not rude. It's not 
There's no problem with it. It's just the default level of politeness. This word is like going out of your way to be more formal or more polite. So whenever I say formal or polite or just polite or just formal, that's what I mean. All right. Anyway. Uh, how would you how would you use who? Um, we're not necessarily going over the grammar right now, but I will I'll give you a little I'll give you a little uh, taste of it, I guess. So for example, let's bring out the text. Oof, that's a lot. And you know what? I want it to be huge. Thanks. Boom. Uh, remember Sono that. And we also had ano, that, parentheses, way over there, like away from us. Sono is more like that near you, person I'm talking to, right? Sono hito, so if we said sono hito, it's that person. Nuance is near you, not near me. Sono hito wa... Oh, we're, we're opening the is bucket. Sono hito wa dare des. Okay, we're closing the is bucket. That person is who? However, and you might see where we're going with this, we're asking a question here, but we're saying it like it's not a question. We're saying, that person is who? Who is that person? You wanna, you wanna ask a question, and you wanna throw in ka. Ka is like, uh, it's, well, it's basically like a question mark. Okay, that's it. So now we've turned it into a question. And this is kind of, this is the grammar for asking questions. I will go over it more later, but just so you can have a taste of it now since I'm teaching you who. Sono hito wa dari desu ka? Right? Who is that person? Sono hito wa dari desu ka? Okay. And people will ask, okay, if ka is used in this case like a question mark, do I, is that considered like, the punctuation? Do I add a period? Do I add a question mark? Do I leave it alone? Here is the answer to this and all other questions that you have just asked. The answer is yes. <laughs> you can add a period. That is the Japanese period like I've shown you. And it still works. Okay. Uh, you cannot leave it alone like this. This is not this is not a closed sentence. You, you want either a period or a question mark. You can use either one in Japanese. And so then you you might ask, okay, if I'm writing a question mark then, then why am I also writing ka? Because isn't, didn't you just say this acts like a question mark? Yes, I did. And the answer to that is because technically this is like the Japanese way of punctuating a sentence and, and clearly indicating that it's a question, right? You're, you're verbalizing the fact that it's a question. In English, we don't verbalize the question mark. We just, like, raise the tone of our voice. And they do that in Japanese, too. So, sono hito wa dare desu ka? Right? You, you, ra you can raise the tone of your voice, but by adding ka, there is no question as to the fact that this is a question. <laughs> There's It's very clear that you're asking a question. So, technically, you could just put a period on here to close the sentence grammatically, uh, correctly, but... You can also add a question mark just because the, the fact that you're writing it and adding ka and then a question mark is okay in Japanese. Like, it's kind of a, a mashup between the Western and, um, I guess, Eastern, well, Japanese uh, languages. At some points, they threw in the question mark into their own um, set of characters and started using it. I, I'm sure there's a deeper history of... Uh, that goes further than that, but uh, basically that's that's the answer. So are you technically putting two question marks on this sentence here? I guess technically yes, but it's completely natural in Japanese and it just makes eating or not you. It's early, ladies and gentlemen. I I do I do not want to eat this sentence. It makes reading this sentence easier at a glance by just adding the question mark. So there's your little grammar point for how to use the word Ooh. Okay, you can start using it right away. Um, and if somebody's talking about some some person or something, you could just be like, Dare? 
right? Dari, dari desu ka? You don't necessarily need the full sentence. You, if you're just having a casual conversation, like, out loud, and you're not writing, you know, to be grammatically perfect, you could just be like, Dare? Like, who? Like, who are you talking about? What? <laughs> so, in... In what case would you use donata? It would be structured the same the same way. Ano hito wa donata desu ka? So, in, in this case... Uh, come on, there you go. You, you're being more polite, you know, maybe you want to substitute hito for kata, like we went over. That's the slightly more formal, polite version of person, right? Ano kata wa donata desu ka? This is, I gotta be honest, it's not used as much. It's, it's, it actually is rather formal, like formal occasions. Like, uh, you know, you're at the, the dinner party with, uh, the head of state, and, uh, you're talking to a bunch of dignitaries that you may or may not even be acquainted with, and you're just trying to be very prim and proper, uh, and use, uh, the correct word for who, okay? Other than that, in everyday conversation, not used very much. You can stick with dare and be just fine, okay? And that is that. So, that's uh, the vocabulary for today. Boom. Get out of here. So if we take a look here. So we just went over denki, dare, donata. And I think I want to go over these next time because there's a lot to talk about with these two. Sai which is uh, the marker for years old, and nansai, like asking, like, how old? Uh, and you know what? We could probably throw oikutsu in there as well, because it's just uh, hiragana. So we'll probably be going over these next time. And uh, then there's not that much left. Hai, ie, are yes and no, which you may or may not already know, because they're very simple Japanese. Uh, but we are moving along here, uh, and we are leaving off right there. So... That means we're gonna go over some other stuff. That was today's vocabulary, and what are we gonna go over next? Numbers, and I need to fix the screen. There we go. Be professional, Valen, what are you doing? Um, and you might be asking, uh, why are we going over numbers all of a sudden? You just, you just really want me to know how to say one, two, three, Valen? Uh, yes I do, but we're going over them because, remember what I said, I am following the structure of Mina no Nihongo. I'm following the vocabulary of it as well. Uh, I cannot show you the actual pages of the book uh, for obvious like copyright reasons, but um, I do suggest that if you if you really want to follow this by yourself at home and keep studying and like get extra practice even when I'm not teaching, um, you will be able to follow this class perfectly if you do. Uh, get the Mino no Nihongo book um, because that's basically what I'm using as a reference and uh, I'm kind of making the chapters into my own stuff just so we have no problems uh, with the people who wrote the book but this is it so I do recommend you use it and uh, before chapter one in this book so we've been going over all the vocabulary for chapter one that's what you see here before chapter one in this book they show you um, some basic points and among those basic points were the sentence structure that I've been showing you so far, like the is bucket, like the something something wa, something des, um, as well as des ka, right? The question. Uh, and they also have a few other points, but they also have numbers because like, uh, like I just showed you here, when we start getting into like years old and how old, um, because this is used in like the first couple chapters of the book, and it's a good thing to know when you're starting out Japanese. Well, you probably want to start knowing numbers for that. So, <laughs> in arrow, hello, my good friend. I bought that book, don't understand a word in it. <laughs> Did you buy the Japanese only version? Um, that is actually what I used when I was starting out, but I lived in Japan when I was starting out. Uh, so it was kind of easy for me to just ask for help when I needed it, but it seems so. Yeah, so here's the thing though. Um, if you have bought the book and are, are trying to read it now before understanding all this vocabulary and stuff, you're going to have a hard time. Um, all the vocabulary that I've gone up over uh, so far, if you're putting these in your rotation and, you know, memorizing them, 
when you go into like the first chapter, you'll notice that they're used in all sorts of sentences. You'll see them all over the place because that's the point of this list. It's the chapter one, uh, yeah, lesson one vocabulary list. Um, so we're not done with this yet. So there might be still a bunch of things that you don't know, but you might also think, well, I, 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 I also know this, right? You should, because we've gone over these. For, we went over these for a very long time. And you can read and write and understand these characters. But if you're seeing a bunch of hiragana or katakana in a sentence, um, that doesn't necessarily mean you know what it means. It just means you can pronounce it and read it, right? And so as we're going over, we're, we're creeping now into the first chapter as I start showing you numbers here. Um, you're going to start to be able to understand the stuff that's written in chapter one. So everything we have done up until this point has been preparation for chapter one. And then once we start chapter one and start going through each chapter, it's going to all build on top of itself. And uh, it's going to be repeating stuff that you can review and it's going to make things easier as we go along. And Arrow says, not a clue, hard to tell when a word ends and another one begins when it's things I don't understand. Yes, perfectly uh, reasonable, perfectly to be expected at uh, the level that we're starting at right now. Um, like I said, Japanese sentences, um, there's no spaces in sentences in, in Japanese. There's no spaces between words. And I said this a long time ago that it's going to be counterintuitive, but that is actually going to make things easier. Um, because once you have the vocabulary that we've been going over under your belt, it's gonna be it's gonna help you read things faster. So, in error, I would not worry too much about that yet. Um, as we start chapter one, I'm gonna introduce uh, sentences pretty close to what they're using, and I will help you out. And if you have issues while we're doing it, uh, you ask me a question, and I will. I will sit down with you and I will make sure that you understand every bit of it perfectly. All right, how about that? How about I make that promise to you right now, all right? You like that? I like that. All right, let's get started here. We're gonna start with the numbers. <laughs> and let me preface this by saying you do not need to memorize the kanji that I'm about to show you. There's kanji for all the numbers. Uh, and Nero says, perfect, I like that, good, perfect. Uh, you do not need to memorize all these kanji but I'm going to show them to you just so you know. And if you want to um, be extra cool, you can throw the kanji into your rotation. And while I'm saying that, I have introduced to you the hardest one there is for numbers. <laughs> and, but let me say this. It may be the hardest one, zero or zero, I should say for pronouncing it in Japanese, or re is the other way to, to say it. But here is a little treat I'm going to bestow upon you right now. Nobody uses this kanji. Pretty much almost never. Uh, so much so that I actually had to ask a real life Japanese person because I know this kanji exists, but I have never seen it in any text. And I have translated, I am a translator, and I've translated things up to university research level, um, all sorts of stuff. I've translated ancient poetry, which is not easy. <laughs> I'm not going to say I do the best job of it. And I have never seen this, even though I know it exists. And I asked the Japanese person, they said, yeah, I don't even know how to write that. Like, if I just told the person, like, hey, write uh, zero in Japanese, uh, they would most likely not know off the top of their head. If they looked it up, obviously, they could write it easily, but because it's not that hard. So you do not need to know or use this. And in your book, if you actually look at the numbers um, at the preface before chapter one, it doesn't even show you this kanji. That's how unused it is. <laughs> so that's the point I have on zero. And it's very easy to pronounce in Japanese, right? Uh, but there are two ways to pronounce it. Those are the good points I want to tell you right now. Zero, which is just using katakana. And like I said, katakana is always, not always, but typically loan words from English. So zero is simply saying zero with a Japanese accent, right? Uh, the other way you will often find it pronounced is they. Okay, they. That is, um, that's it. That's zero. And we have one. Uh, most people probably know one, two, three, or something like that, because the you know it's just like it's just like in Spanish, people just somehow know one, two, three in Spanish for some reason. Like it, it's just stuff that you pick up as a kid through cartoons or just all sorts of things. So you might know this already, but it is ichi, 
and it here's the kanji okay perhaps one of the easiest kanji in existence it's a straight horizontal line okay by virtue of writing a line you can now write the number one in japanese just like that what do we got next two oh my god it's double the amount of lines in number one thus double difficulty but still so easy it's two horizontal lines ni ichi ni and you'll you'll notice i have to catch myself here and explain this when i'm pronouncing these in order when you're lining them up next to each other and saying one two three four five ichi ni you wouldn't i think in natural japanese it's more like ichi ni right you're you're kind of that let me let me pull this out here this is ichi right ichi you're kind of really making that eye weak. Like, you're really almost making it silent. It's like, each me. Right? That just makes... Why does that happen? Because you're making the flow of your pronunciation from one to the other in a sequence of words, in this case numbers, uh, faster, easier. We do that a lot in English. All languages do that. They kind of, like, cut or combine pronunciations together when they're reading them in a sequence or reading them fast. The same thing happens in Japanese. So, each me. And what is number three? You know it. Sang. And it's three horizontal lines, okay? But you're gonna notice here, this one is the shortest, this one is the second shortest, and this one is the longest. Is that a huge deal that you perfectly do that that way? Uh, no, but if you wanna have your Japanese look nice and pretty, then you probably wanna keep that in mind, okay? Otherwise, if you do this, are people still going to be able to read it? Yeah. It's three lines. It means three. And that is pronounced as sung. Right here, you should be able to read this. So we have... Oops. Zero or de. Ich, ni, sung. Okay. One, two, three. And, uh... I want to make a point here real quick. Um, I did mention this before, but just as a refresher... They're not always written in kanji. I'm showing you the kanji so that you know what they are and you know that they exist. But Japanese people, of course, use Roman numerals. Uh, it's, it's actually, it's probably more common to see Roman numerals than the kanji. The kanji are used, like I showed you in, um, I think it was like two or three episodes ago, more in like official, really like formal documents. Um, ancient texts and stuff, uh, stuff like that. Uh, in Arrow just tipped... $20 and said in Japanese, Arigato gozaimashita. Thank you. In Arrow has gone ahead with the study and uh, is. Uh, can. Look, you wrote. You wrote that and I read it. You've done it in Arrow. And Arrow says thank you in Japanese. But in Arrow, I would like to thank you. Kochira koso. Arigato gozaimashita. Thank you very much, in Arrow. I do appreciate that. You are on the top leaderboard of donators. Boom. Uh, explosions, flames, fire and flames. Um, I will, I'll throw that in the YouTube. Uh, YouTube, if you're watching, watch this. Boom, explosion. Okay, if you're watching on Twitch, you don't, uh, you don't get that. Okay. <laughs> I, I have to set up buttons for that. Yeah, you know I'm lazy. Okay, let's let's keep going here. Thank you again, In Arrow, for that generous donation. I do appreciate that. Uh, four. Okay, so this is now where we're starting to go crazy here. You're, you're like, okay, we got the one, two, three. Uh, why don't we have? Why don't Why don't we just do something like this? Well, I don't know. And also, I guess because it's gonna start getting confusing. Because you, if you actually have to sit there and count the the lines, then you're like, what's the point of even? using this right um this once you learn this kanji it's it's very clear that it's four <laughs> when i look at this in my head i see nothing but four because that's pretty much what it is and how do we pronounce it she or there's a second pronunciation yo and now you're asking yourself phelan what do you mean there's a second pronunciation which one means four and which one doesn't they both mean four, and it just... It depends on the context in which you're um, saying or reading or writing the number. Um, 
I don't want to go too in-depth as to why there are two of these right now. We're going to come across cases later on where I'm going to say like, oh, look, this, did you hear me say she right here instead of young? Or this, did you hear me say young here instead of she? These are the cases where you would use this one instead of this one. It just sounds better in Japanese to pick one or the other. Okay, that's that's why that exists. All right. And uh, look, this is a, it's, it's got the box, right? You got your favorite box there. That's, that's it. Okay. Remember Boo in uh, Katakana? And that's pretty much what's going on in there. It's, it's a little different. This, this tail should technically be a little more up like that, but that's pretty much it. Okay, so that's four. Got it. And five. Five is nice and easy in pronunciation. And, you know, honestly, the kanji is not that hard either. Go. So we have zero, ich, ni, sang, shi, go. And you'll notice here, I just said ich, ni, sang, shi. I did not say ich, ni, sang, yong. You could say ich, ni, sang, yong, and it would be perfectly acceptable. But, and I also conferred with a real life Japanese person about this one too, because I wanted to make sure that, because when I speak Japanese, if I am saying the numbers in order, the the word that naturally comes out of my mouth without thinking about it would be ich ni sang shi. And I did confirm that that, yes, that's that's probably, when you're reading them in order like that, that's probably the more natural way to do it. Okay, and somebody's gonna jump in the comments later and be like, uh, actually, Valen, I am a Japanese person and I say ich ni sang yong. So, oh, you're wrong. I don't care. Uh... Don't worry about it, all right? <laughs> Every, uh, there's always going to be an exception. There's, there's no point arguing about it. Uh, goal. Yeah. Um, if I remember right, the stroke order is just like that. Pretty easy, right? And you can go look this up on uh, G-Show if you want. If you want to find the stroke orders and actually write them in your notebook. Throw them into your rotation. That's fine, too. Six. Roku. Uh, each, ni, san, shi, go, rok. Right, and they're, they're they're pretty easy, right? Check that out. Boom, done it. Six. Okay. Uh, let's keep going. Seven. Uh-oh, we got two here again, just like four. Shit. Well, if you read this, if I really enunciated the hiragana that you see here, I would say shichi, right? But you, you kind of notice, just like what I did with uh, Ichi, right? You kind of, when you're reading numbers like that, you kind of dip the, the end of it off. So it sounds like Ichi, Ni, San, Shi, Go, Roku, Shichi. Shichi, Shichi, right? You're kind of softening the end of it there. But you'll notice the other way to say it is Nana. How cute. Isn't seven cute when you say it Nana? I don't know why. It just, uh... I don't know. I want to name my... Here you go, YouTube. I want to name my beautiful kitten, Nana. How cute, how adorable would the kitten Nana be? Uh, very adorable. But, again, I will tell you the cases later in which you would use either one. Like, in this case, you would use Shichi. In this case, you would use Nana. And, as an example, just like I told you right now with four, that you would, when you're reading out the numbers in order, you would say... She most likely is the most like natural way to read the numbers in order. I would also use shichi here. So I would say ich ni sang shi go roku shichi. Okay? Ich ni sang yon go roku nana would not naturally come out of my mouth. And I know me as a not born in Japan person, non-Japanese would that doesn't hold much merit saying not naturally come out of my mouth, but it should hold a little because I've been here for a very long time and I am a translator and I speak nothing but Japanese when I'm uh, actually living here in daily life. The only time I'm speaking English really is with you or if, if I'm online, you know, chatting with somebody. Um, but yes, I have confirmed this with a Japanese person just, just to make sure that nobody can jump on here and just jump down my throat about it, right? Uh, by the way, one little note here that I forgot about four, since we're on the subject. People, I, I see people who are just starting Japanese get worried about using she because they they heard from like their Japanese teacher as like a funny little note um, that 
Oh, be careful with that because that also means like death. Oh, we don't want to say she because she is used in. Remember, I told you the word she knew last time, <laughs> which literally means die. Let's just let's just look this up. Right? You die to pass away. You notice here this this is this character is she. Let's just look up the, just the character itself. She death decease. He also used in uh, the, the death penalty uh, and out for baseball, sure. Death. Yeah. Death, die, she. Okay. And so people, when they're learning this, I've actually had somebody else learning Japanese on Twitch and I, who told me, no, 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 I can't say ichni sang she because that's like, oh, that's, that's death. Uh, and I said, well, yeah, I mean, that like, it's like an old wives' tale kind of thing. Like, it's not... People here, when they read she for the number four, are not thinking like, Ooh, <laughs> oh, we're talking about death, guys. Be careful. Nobody's thinking that in real life here, okay? Whoever taught you that, people who are worried about that, they were just telling you like, oh, that's like a, you know, funny little side note there about she. That's uh, some, you know, if you wanted to be poetic about things, you could, you could say like she for you know, death or something. Like, you could play with your words using four and death and stuff. Don't worry about it, guys, okay? If somebody tells you not to use this for four, just tell them to relax, okay? <laughs> now that I've spent ages on that, let's move on to number eight, all right? Another easy easy one. Hachi. Ichi ni san shi go rok shichi hachi. All right, you see I'm kind of trailing off the eye at the end of that as well. Uh, pretty easy here. Let's actually, I want to make a note of this because I'm curious if g -Show shows this in a different font. It doesn't. Um, check this out. This might, yeah, they're both the same. And here's the stroke order, by the way, if you need it. But the reason I'm showing you this, oh, actually, here it is. This is what I was looking for. You see the, the difference in fonts here? How this one has it like, um, like a roof on it before it starts this tail here. It kind of does one of these things. And this one does not really. I see it better here. Um, they're both acceptable for the character for eight. This one's just more a little bit more um, calligraphic. I still struggle with under knowing if that's a word or not. I, I don't think it is, but <laughs> is it? It must be. Um, but this one is more clear because this. If you write sloppily and write this way, you could start getting confused with for other characters that look very similar like um yeah let's look this one up the, the character for enter um looks very similar if you screw it up so <laughs> you see what i mean here and, and it also starts looking similar to what we've already gone over which is just the same thing in the opposite direction so I would recommend that if you want to write this kanji, if you want to learn this one and, and memorize it, do it like this font, okay? Very clear that you have one stroke and then you have a top and the second part of it, right? That's that's it. That's eight, all right? I, this is... You can't really confuse this with other characters if you write it like this. So that's what I suggest. That's eight. And then we have nine, which is Q. And if you remember when we went over Kenkyusha, let's check that out again, actually. Kenkyusha, researcher, right? Remember I told you that in the second kanji for Kenkyusha? Uh, this one right here. Remember I told you the number nine is in there. So you actually already know how to write this. If you just take it out of Kenkyusha, uh, the Q portion of Kenkyusha, you can write the number nine. So we have Be Ich Ni Sang Shi Go Roku Shich Hach Q. Okay, Q. Just like that. And pronunciation as always, it's not Q W. There's no W on the end there. It's not Q. It's Q. Alright, and even me, I'm probably not the best pronunciation guy because I'm not native Japanese, but look. I'm doing my best, and you should too. All right. Let's wrap it up with ten. Ju. And it's it's just that's it. it you just got the, you just got across there. That's it. All right. And that's ten. 
So from zero to 10, here are your basic numbers. And by virtue of just learning these, you can write a lot more than these, right? If you just learn these characters in English, or I should say English, like if you learn them in the um, Roman numeral system, not in kanji, you can write like pretty much any number now, right? Not necessarily the case in Japanese because there are other kanji for, um, like for example, 100 has its own kanji, 1000 has its own kanji, but you can write a lot of stuff with just these. So it's good to get these um, familiarized now. You don't necessarily have to memorize them because we're not necessarily like practicing, practicing them a ton just yet. Um, but there will be opportunities coming up to start using these, like saying how old you are. Um, and we could start saying things like um, the months of the year. Uh, so, so you don't need to learn this right now, but I'm just, just going to tell you. If, for example, if we threw this kanji there, um, this kanji by itself is used for moon. Uh, and you pronounce it as tsuki if you're saying moon. But if you attach it to a number, it can become gatsu getsu. So ichigatsu would be, right? Ichigatsu would be January. Nigatsu. February, right? There's no like fancy pants names that you have to memorize for the months in Japanese. It's literally the character for moon next to a number and that will tell you what it is. All right. Uh, you don't need to know that right now. That's that's way down later in the lessons. But I just wanted to tell you like that's another way you could start using numbers if you really wanted to. Um, but anyway, now that we have this done, I want to I want to say something else because people will immediately try to start making numbers that I have not shown you. <laughs> like I just said, you, you could pretty much. So what's 11? Okay. Take, let's take a look at this again. How would you construct 11 in English? You, you would write... Well, not in English. I have to stop saying that. How would you construct it in the, the Roman numeral system? And how would you pronounce it? Well, you would write two ones. So in Japanese... You would still write two ones if you were writing it in numerals, right? You just pronounce it in Japanese, obviously. You say the Japanese word, but here's what I want to um, explain to you. If you think that this is how you would write it and pronounce it in Japanese, you would be wrong. It is not ichi ichi. Okay, what is it? Oh, stop doing that, Balin. There you go. It is ju ichi. So. What was ju? That was 10. And ichi was 1, right? So would we do 1, 1? No. We would do 10, 1. Okay. So in Japanese, it's more of like a kind of... I know some other languages are like this. I, I want to say French does some similar wackiness like this, but I'm not... Don't crucify me if you know French, because I do not. <laughs> I, for some reason, heard that somewhere, I guess. Uh, I know other languages do it like this. Um, and so if you're coming from that language or you have experience with, with language like that, then this is probably easier for you. But if you're just coming from English, it might seem new and strange. Uh, you're doing 10 and 1 to say 11, right? Juichi, right? Not ichichi, you would say juichi. Okay. Um, so, then... What's 12? Can you can you figure it out? Well, you'd probably now say to me, well, it's not ichi ni, right? Because we already just figured out that that's not what we would do. What we would what would we do, right? You would you would say 10 and 2. That's it. Right? We've got here 10 and 2. Ju ni. Ju ni makes 12. Okay? Pretty simple. So you can follow this down the line. So that was ju ichi, ju ni, ju san, ju yong, ju go, ju roku, ju shichi, or ju nana. You could also, you could use either one. Um, I've also heard that kind of depends on like your dialect. I would tend to naturally say ju nana because I'm, an, I'm in the north of Japan. I'm a northerner up here. And that's, I, I've heard that's kind of something that we do. Though some people would argue with that. Uh, so you just keep going like that until until what would you do for 20 
Uh oh, just the math, engage math mode. Uh, I would do, um, I would do 10, 10, right? Would I do Juju? <laughs> Is Juju 20? Uh, no. And it's also, it's also not knee zero. Definitely not that. You know what it is? Need you. Here's where things start getting complicated. <laughs> like, I could try to explain why this is the way it is. Why is it not Juju? Because Ju, so you had 10 plus a number to make the teens, right? Why don't you have 10 plus a number to make what comes next, 20? Um, well, it's it's the same. It kind it's kind of following the same pattern if you really think about it. Because if we did, if we followed this pattern down the line, we would do. So this is need you. This is be twenty. How would we do? Let me just show you real quick. How do you do twenty one? Wouldn't be ni zero ichi. It would be ni juichi. Right. So if we just had juichi, that would just be eleven, right? But if we put ni before that, two, ni juichi is now 21. So let's let's back it up here because I'm going to confuse people already. Ni, remember, is, or you may not remember because we just went over it, is 2. And Ju is 10. And together they form what is known as 20. Okay? 2 and 10, 20. Ni Ju. Alright, so then let's jump back. Uh, there you go. So... 21 is, again, ni is 2, ju is 10, or, yeah, and then iti is 1. Right? So this by itself is 20, and then you're just adding the 1 to the end. So how would you say 22? You do the same thing that you're doing here. You'd set it up the same way. Ni, ju, ni, ju, ni. Okay? And you repeat down the line so and i'm not even gonna i don't even have a like a s illustrator slide set up for this um how would you do 30. you could you probably could figure it out now that i've shown you the pattern of how japanese works right you would say sangju right this would be three this would be ten and if you wanted to say 31 sangju ichi and by the way one just for consistency. Sati Wang, pronounced just like that. Another uh, Waseigo Japanese stolen English loan word. Sati Wang is how Japanese people say Baskin Robbins, uh, because for some reason, and Baskin Robbins does exist here. Um, they're actually all over the place. All the signs in Japan will, will they'll also say just exactly like they say in the Western world. They just say Baskin Robbins. And, uh, actually, by the power of the internet, can I look this up? Can I look up Sati... I would never write this. There it is. <laughs> Sati Wang. Is it going to show me... It does. It just brings right up. It just brings up Baskin Robbins right away. <laughs> it knows. Show me the images. So you see, even in Japan... They use the same logo, they use the same um, writing. Uh, they've got pretty much the same kind of ice cream. Delicious, by the way. I love Baskin Robbins. Uh, oh, here's a good example. Here is an actual shop. Baskin Robbins shop. Right there. And it says right here in katakana Sati Wang ice cream. But you'll notice it says Baskin Robbins, right? Nobody in Japan calls it Baskin Robbins, they call it Sati Wang. And I have blown the minds of Japanese people when I explained to them that 31... Well, first of all, it should be 31 flavors, because... And this is what I explained to them. It's because there was 31 flavors of ice cream. And just... Whoa! You mean to tell me that Baskin Robbins is the name of the, the shop? The huge... Letters above Asati One is actually the name of the shop is like the reaction that I get to people. And then it clicks in their head when I explain it. And we have a good old laugh together, right? Ha ha ha. Baskin Robbins is hilarious. That's that's what we do. This is how I spend my days, guys. But I'm not live here teaching you uh, numbers. Uh, but now, now you can say uh, the name of an ice cream shop 
in Japanese as well. Uh, congratulations, and that marks the end of today's lesson. Uh, and I'm not kidding; it really does. I'm I'm done with with this at this point. Let me let me clean this. There we go. Um, let me actually take you back here. Next week, coming up, uh, it is the 28th of April here. Next week in, in Japan, the start of May starts. Golden Week! Golden Week is a series of holidays in Japan where yeah, most people, you know, get most of the week off. And if you don't get all the days off, um, for example, this this year, I think next Thursday and Friday are not holidays, so people would have to go back to work. You know, they'd have like a really long weekend into Wednesday, and then they'd have to go back to work. But most people would also just, if they have the days off, they'd take Thursday and Friday if, if they're able to. Uh, obviously, it depends on where you work, but Golden Week um, is usually a time to get together with friends and family, and it's, you know, it's, it's out here in spring. It's nice springtime, spring transitioning into summer soon. People like to take a look at the beautiful sakura and flowers, which are, depending on where you live, kind of out of, starting to be out of bloom now, but, um, you know, you have barbecues, you do the drinky, you do the eaty. Uh, you do the laughy with your friends and family, and you, you have a good time, but this year, of course, dreaded Corona has struck down all of our good, happy times, but that's not going to stop us from relaxing, and I'm included in that. Uh, I would like to relax next week, too. I may or may not uh, be on, on streaming uh, on Twitch or YouTube. Well, we'll see. You know, maybe I want to play a game or something. Maybe I want to teach Japanese, maybe I don't. It's a mystery until next week, isn't it? Uh, but that's what's going on. If I'm not online, that's why. Um, maybe I'm out um, looking at a flower. You know, you ever think that maybe I just want to look at some flowers in a field? Because because uh, sometimes I do. And sometimes I want to take a video of it. And uh, I have done that. I am doing that. I am taking videos of the beautiful springtime sights out here in Japan. And I will be uploading them uh, soon. You know, hold your horses on that. I'm getting there. Don't worry. Um, I'm just scrolling through pictures of Golden Week. <laughs> anyway, uh, I I think that about wraps up what I want to say. I'm just I'm just rambling at this point. Um, thank you all again very much for joining me today. Uh, another wonderful episode. Uh, thanks to you, all of my faithful followers and students and and, and friends pals out there. I am very happy to call you all my pal. All right. Let me say uh, thank you to Silverlight266. Did I thank you last time? I guess. Silverlight266, maybe this is double thank you. Uh, Love Taylor, thank you. Skills DP, Skill SDP. Malaya Uchiha as well. Thank you, thank you. And in arrow with the glorious, wonderful $20 tip. Arigato gozaimashita. And Arrow, I know that you have been keeping up with your studies, and uh, you should be proud. You've, you've, I've seen your work. I've seen the screenshots. Looking good, buddy. Keep it up. Um, and I, uh, I I will be here next time for you and Arrow and for the rest of you. And uh, we will continue on with our Japanese lessons, and we'll continue on with the good times. You know what I'm saying? So until then, uh, have a good time, and take care. <laughs>